This lesson deals with circuit variables. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter one, starting on page four. In this section, we're gonna take a look at several circuit variables, in particular current, voltage, power, and energy. Turns out energy is not a measurable quantity. It's really a derived concept. To measure energy in an electrical system, we would need to define a quantity that we can measure, and that's called charge. There are two kinds of charge, positive and negative. As you might recall, like charges repel, and unlike charges attract one another. The electric current is the rate of charge flow passing through a predetermined area, typically a cross-sectional area of metal wire. That is, that current is the change in charge over the change in time. Now, if you take the limit as the change in time shrinks, this becomes the definition of a derivative. I is the current in amperes, Q is the charge in coulombs, and T is time in seconds. Electric current has a direction associated with its charge flow, just like water in a pipe. We use an error to indicate the equivalent flow of positive charge. Now that we've had a definition, it'd be nice to do some examples. If you look in the index of the ebook, you'll see that with each chapter, there's a set of supplemental problems. These are collections of old homeworks, application notes, and sometimes magazine articles. I've covered enough background now so that you could do supplemental problems 1.1 and 1.2. There are also videos of these supplemental problems. As we cover different pages in the lecture notes, you can then attempt problems to enhance your background and to improve your problem solving skills. Our next definition is that of voltage. The voltage or potential difference between two points indicates the energy that's required to move charge from one point to another. Voltage is the change in energy over the change in charge. And again, if you take the change small enough, it becomes a derivative. These are voltage and volts. W is our energy in joules, and Q is our charge in coulombs. Now, with these different units, we've had names associated with them. And these were people that were instrumental in discovering some of these concepts. You can find on my homepage a little bio about many of these individuals and many of the struggles that they went through in their careers. Voltage has a polarity, and we use a plus and minus to indicate that. Voltages, like currents, can be positive or negative. Our next quantity is power. It's the rate at which energy is transformed. In other words, it's a change in energy per unit time. Make the change small enough and you have the definition of a derivative. Here, power is in watts, energy is in joules, and T is time in seconds. As a consequence of our definition of power as the change in energy per change in time, we could also use our two previous definitions of voltage and current, which is the change in energy per change in charge, the change in charge per change in time. These drop out, and we get the change in energy per change in time. But that's our voltage times the current. So power is voltage times current. Now that we know the relationship with power and energy, let's see if we could solve for the total energy transferred during an interval of time, say from T0 to T1. Take power is equal to the derivative of energy with respect to time. Let's integrate both sides of the equation, dt, from an lower limit of T0 to T1. These cancel, and then the integral of 1 dx is just simply x at the upper limit minus x at the lower limit. So we have the change in energy now as the energy at T1 minus the energy at T0, and that's gonna equal the integral from T0 to T1 of the power dt. And so we could solve for the energy in our system at some time in the future, T1, based upon an initial condition and then the integral of the power from T0 to T1. And these are some of the properties of our circuit variables. 